Hi, it's Caitlin from Really Big Plant. Thank you so much for joining me. Really Big Plant. All right, so we're doing a little bit of a cozy floor plant chores. I love sitting on the floor and I feel like I haven't done a floor video in a while. So we're doing that today. I have like a ton of plants that I wanna repot, including this big palm tree behind me. So we're gonna do that as well as my precious Thai constellation, Monstera, and a whole bunch of others. Plus I have some new stuff that I got that I wanna show you guys and some plant styling that I wanna do. So yeah, let's just get into it. I wanna rearrange this area a little bit. Um, I got this, I got this triple tier plant stand from Home Goods. This was $30, it's very like stylish looking. So I wanna set it up back there. So let's just do a little rearranging. I've got like a ton of plants out on the floor right now because I've got a lot of repottings planned for this video. So <laughs> it's a little cluttered over here. Okay, so I recently got a bunch of different types of spider plants and some of them have these curly leaf growth habits and some of them have more of a, of a just like a spear leaf. This is the Chlorophytum camosum Hawaiian and then this is a curly type of spider plant. This is a Chlorophytum camosum Steve um, or green bonnie. So it's got like a curly leaf and you see how this one's leaves curl under and these stick up. Anyway, I got a whole bunch of different spider plants and I think for that stand, I'm gonna use all the new spider plants that I got that have the leaves that stick straight up because I think that'll look like a cute little moment. So I'm gonna go put them in there. Okay, I feel like it looks awesome back there now. Okay, so now it is time to repot this big palm tree here. I've got this cat palm that I got from Home Depot, I think. Was it Home Depot or Lowe's? I think it was Home Depot. I got this from Home Depot not too long ago. It was in one of my shopping videos. It was only $35 and it's enormous and I'm so, so excited to have it, but it definitely needs to be potted up because um, when I first brought it home, a couple days later it fell over because it's so top heavy and then I watered it and then a couple days later it fell over again. It keeps falling over because it's in a tiny pot and the top of the plant is quite large. This was a $35 pot and plant stand from Home Goods, um, but I just have it inside its nursery pot in there and I wanna put it into a slightly bigger nursery pot and then put it back inside of there. So let's get it out of here and pot it up. It was only 30. It was $30. It says $29.98 on the pot. What a, what a steal. This was a steal. Okay. Whew. It's about to fall over again. So this plant is a type of palm tree. Ooh. Hi, Finn. This is Phineas, my dog. Come here. Say hi to everyone. Good boy, Finn. Are you part of it? Yeah, you're being in the video, good boy. Okay, so this palm tree is actually in a really small pot. It's, I'm gonna pick it up by the plant. I'll show you. It's in this smaller nursery pot inside of this other pot. Interesting, okay, so my plan, <laughs> I'm all confused. My plan was to pot it into this pot because I thought that this had holes in the bottom of it. This is the pot that it came in. Um, it came with like the nursery pot it's planted in plus this pot. I was gonna repot it into this pot, but I, I just noticed that this doesn't actually have any holes in it. So maybe it just like leaks a tiny bit of water out the bottom. I need to go get a different pot. Okay, are these any bigger? Yeah, this is bigger. Oh, so heavy. Okay, I have these multiple bins of soil. A couple videos ago, I did that money tree unbraiding and I mixed up a ton of cocoa core for that project and then ended up not using it and finally got a bin for it. So I transferred it in here, scooped some into my smaller bin. I don't wanna work directly out of here just cause I wanna try to minimize contamination if there is anything to contaminate like bacteria or 
eggs from fungus gnats or anything like that. So I'm going to scoop with this other bowl and just put some <laughs> into my other container. This isn't exactly like <laughs> sterile technique because I'm not being super clean right now, but I think it's better than just like scooping directly out of here and then having my hands all in different plant soils and then going back into the main bin. I've got all this paper because I went to Home Goods recently and bought a bunch of new pots and like that thing behind me that I styled and they wrapped everything up with tons and tons of paper. I figured I should just use it for this. Let's get this on the ground. I think it looks like this pot is just kind of like busting open so I might just <laughs> That's got, wow, that has crazy roots. Hang on, I need to change my camera so you can see. Wow. so glad that this pot broke a little bit and I just decided to tear into it because I think if I was trying to squish it and save the pot and pull it out the normal way, the whole plant, I don't think it would have come out because this is so root bound that the roots are like built into the grooves in the pot. Um, wow, this was really in need of a repotting. I'm so excited to be doing this. are so impressive. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's get this out of here. <laughs> There's barely any dirt. It just came right out. Okay. Wow. I can't believe what this looks like. <laughs> okay. Wow. So now I'm faced with the task of trying to separate this root ball a little bit. Um, it's like hard like a rock. So I might have to do some just like root pruning and just cut through it to give it a little bit of room to expand. Wow, this is one tough plant. These roots <laughs> seem like they could withstand anything. And actually, you know what? That's exactly what they were meant for. This, this palm tree, this type of palm grows next to rushing water. It likes to grow by rapidly flowing water or even right alongside a waterfall. So the name cat palm is not actually because these have anything to do with cats. It is because of their scientific name, Camadoria cataractorum. The word cataract actually means waterfall. If you trace it all the way back to its original, I think Greek root um, and unclear, Unclear on how it relates to the word cataract that is the ocular condition when your eyes get cloudy. Looks like when I was looking this up, there's some conflicting opinions on whether or not this comes from the way that rushing water in a waterfall foams up and turns white as opposed to a normal clear water, which is kind of like what happens with the cataracts where you get these cloudy eyes. But anyway, the word cataract means waterfall. The genus is Camadoria, that is a type of palm tree, and then cataractorum, arum at the end. Arum or orum is like a Latin thing. It's the genitive form of certain nouns, which means that it, it, you take a noun and then you add the certain ending to it and it means of that noun. So cataractorum means of waterfalls. So Camadoria cataractorum is the Camadoria that is of waterfalls. So this is a plant that likes to grow in waterfalls or alongside waterfalls where it's native in South and Central America. And it's got this really, really tough root system to withstand that rushing water and to withstand the constant pressure of being 
washed away. So these roots are designed to hold this plant in place in a waterfall where the torrent and the rushing water tries to rip this plant out of where it's growing. It's got to have these really strong roots in order to anchor itself down. And the growth habit of this plant is also related to that. It doesn't really grow trunks. It just grows these stalks straight out of the ground, almost like a big grass. And that's so that if it gets knocked over in rushing water, it can kind of bend with the flow rather than snapping like a tree trunk might. So these palms don't actually develop big trunks. They mainly just clump and they spread along the ground. And they sprout new babies right next to where the parent plant is growing and they kind of spread horizontally. And that is all part of their adaptation to grow in a situation where um, their life is dependent on their ability to hang on to where they're growing. So growing in a big clump and then spreading out rather than getting tall is to this plant's advantage. So in nature, I think this doesn't get too much more than like six, eight feet tall. And usually as a house plant, they stay even smaller. So anyway, these roots <laughs> are really, really, really thick. When I imagine myself right now, I'm like, can I deliver <gasps> more agitating force than a waterfall while I repot this plant? I don't know. I don't know if I'm that persistent. <laughs> found the little self-watering wick that was in there. Kind of hard to tell sometimes if, if you're just mutilating the plant or if you're actually making progress. <laughs> Whew. Oh yeah, that's progress. We're doing it. We are doing it. Can a waterfall do this? Huh. <laughs> All right. These roots are like so strong and thick that when you find one and pull on it, you can actually like pull it through. Like it comes out intact. Oh, okay. I think that's, that's as good as I'm gonna get for now. So let's put it in here. Oh, okay, this is so exciting. It's happening. This is quite an undertaking. These roots are looking so good, I barely broke any off. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is like bigger than this pot. What do I do? Okay, I need a way bigger pot. What am I gonna do? <laughs> okay, this, this is, this is too small. Okay, um, I have a bigger nursery pot, but I don't know if it's gonna fit inside the pot I wanna put this in. How am I gonna make this happen, you guys? What do I do? Okay, um, I guess I'm just gonna see if I can squish this in here because I don't have a pot that's in the in-between size, but I already pulled this out of its other pot, so this is what we have to do for now. We're going with it, we're doing it.
I added about this much soil into the bottom. There's like five inches of extra soil down there um, that wasn't available to this plant before. So I feel like we're still kind of helping it out, but I need to get a bigger pot for this soon. I can't even put it back into the pot that it came out of because I destroyed it. So <laughs> this is what we're doing for now. So exciting. Okay, hopefully that does it for this plant for now. Um, yeah, it's not ideal that this pot was so similar to the size of the one that it was already in. I guess I could have pruned back some more of the roots, but ultimately I want to size this plant up again. For now, this is gonna have to do, but I actually basically put like almost this whole tub of soil in here, even though it looks like it wasn't that big of a size up. So that is a lot more volume for this plant to expand into. So hooray, it's perfect. Yay, I feel like it looks great in there. So hooray, onwards. Which is just expanded cocoa core and perlite, which I then usually amend with slow release fertilizer granules that I like to put in. I just refill this little container. I don't remember what this was for. I think this was, there was some candy in here. All right, refilled. So this is a little ficus deltoidea. It is an adorable little ficus that doesn't actually grow too big. They like to grow as like a little bush. It has these really amazing leaves that are golden yellow on one side and green on the other. I got this plant a couple weeks ago. I ordered in the mail and when I unpacked it, um, it just didn't have that much soil in it. I think I maybe also kind of like pulled out some of the soil when I was unwrapping it. But yeah, it's a really thirsty plant and it barely has any dirt. So I just want to repot it straight into this little pot here. It is a ficus, so it is a little bit finicky about changing conditions. And when it first arrived, it dropped a couple of leaves, but it's already putting out a ton of cute little new baby leaves. So that is very exciting. And I was on the fence about whether or not I should repot it today because it is in the midst of a bout of new growth. But I don't know if you can see how little dirt there is in this pot. <laughs> It's so shallowly potted in here that it just needs a lot of water all the time. So I, for my own sake, am trying to just pot this so that it's easier for me to take care of. the roots a little bit but I'm barely gonna touch them because I don't really want to disturb this plant because it is growing new growth right now Perfect. 
Okay, ficus deltoidea is like officially part of the family. It's kind of how I feel when I pot something into a ceramic pot directly. A lot of times I prefer to use a plastic pot inside of an outer pot, but when I do plant plants directly into a ceramic pot, it feels so like official. <laughs> okay, hooray. Oh, by the way, I forgot. I was gonna talk about this when I was like setting stuff up, but then I forgot to show it to you. Do you notice what this plant is right here? Dun, da, da, da. This is a big philodendron heteraceum rio, which is a much more uncommon variety that is very similar to the philodendron Brazil, which is one of my all time favorite philodendrons. And the rio here has this has this cream and yellow variegation down the center of each leaf versus the Brazil philodendron, which has um, more like a neon green and yellow variegation and doesn't tend to get these patches of creamy white on the leaves. So I, believe it or not, found this at Home Depot a couple of days ago and it was only $20. It was $19.98 before tax. So I am so thrilled that I found this. I can't even believe it. <laughs> So yeah, there were like four or five of these left in the store when I went there. I actually went to go just get plant pots and to get some other supplies, but there was a delivery person at the store setting stuff up and he commented when he saw me go right to these. He was like, those are amazing and they're real. They're real Rios. So he knew, <laughs> he knew what was up. He said that he brought in a lot of them and they, they almost sold out like pretty immediately. It made me feel like I need to actually go to the store way more often to catch those interesting rare finds. So yeah, right now I'm just taking this hook off the top. Yeah! And I'm gonna just put it back in this pot I got back here. This was only $16 from Home Goods, but it is so heavy. Like if you knock it over onto your foot, your foot might break. Um, <laughs> but I think that's good for a plant in a stand. Anyway, I don't think I'm going to keep it in there ultimately just because um, <laughs> the plastic pot sticks out and I'm going to need to repot it. But yeah, I just wanted to show this to you guys. I can't believe I have this huge philodendron rio in my possession now. Philodendron rio is one of the philodendrons that was on my like original plant wish list that I really wanted back in like 2019 or something like that. But they were very expensive and small cuttings were selling for like $50. And if you have any experience with philodendron heteraceum, which is this type of vining philodendron, you know that they're very easy to propagate. So I always had a feeling that this plant was kind of not worth paying the huge price for because someday it would be available in large quantities. So I guess that time has finally arrived. So this is interesting because recently I feel like I've been finding like all of the plants that I wanted from about like four or five years ago. So I guess that's about how long it takes, even with pretty high demand for growers to be able to increase their stock to a point where they're able to offer it to the public for like a reasonable price. I can't believe this was only 20 bucks. So yay, philodendron Rio, I can't believe I have it. Okay, so I still have this huge box of perlite. I'm gonna just amend my soil with a little more perlite. So I've got my Thai constellation here. This is the newest leaf and it's doing really, really well. Um, I think I showed this in a very recent video. It has not grown any new growth since then. So um, that's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I do want to pot it up and give it some support because I'm hoping for this to get pretty big. So I know that the Thai constellations have pretty close internodal distance, so it doesn't always necessarily need support, but I want to give some to mine. Okay, so. Here is the setup that I think I want to put this plant in. I've got this coco core pole, which I know they don't work as well as regular moss poles because they don't like absorb tons of moisture, but I have discovered that the coco core poles, I mean, if you, if you spray them and get them wet, they do retain some water. I mean, they're absorbent, so um, they do work. And for some plants that are less picky than others about 
getting their roots into something. The cocoa cord poles totally work like a moss pole. And then I've got this pot here. Um, it's got like a little bit of a, a basin in it. So I'm gonna set it up in like a self-watering system with another plastic pot inside of it and a wick. I'm not doing the self-watering so that this plant can stay moist at all times. I'm just doing it mainly so that when I water it, if water sits in the reservoir, it doesn't just sit there forever. It will get wicked up into the plant. So I'm still gonna water this on a schedule where I allow the soil to kind of dry out lightly between waterings. First of all, I suppose I should take this plant <laughs> out of the pot and make sure that it has enough of a root system to merit sizing up. So this is currently a little four inch plant pot and plant pot sizes refers to the diameter of the pot, um, not the height. So sometimes a six inch pot can be like one of those tall ones that's very deep. That has a lot more volume than a short six inch pot, but they'd still be called six inch pots. So sometimes that can be a little bit confusing. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing pot sizes, the diameter is only one of the dimensions. Um, I don't have any roots sticking out of the bottom of this yet. So some people might say that I'm repotting this too soon, but I'm definitely an underwaterer. And one of the risks in repotting plants into pots that are too big or when they have kind of small root system is that you just don't want to overwater them and overwhelm them with a ton of stagnant water in the pot. But I know myself and I don't think that's gonna happen with me. So I think it's okay for me to size things up a little bit early if I want to. All right. Ooh. Or the plant just has awesome roots and is totally ready to be sized up like this one. So this looks really good. The roots look amazing. All right, okay, this looks great to me. So I'm gonna take this pot, put some of this in there. trying to add a pole in. Where'd that pole go? Oh, it's here. Did you hear that satisfying chunk when I just dropped it in there? Uh, 
It's perfect. Okay, I'm super excited about this. Um, I don't think this even really needs to be tied onto the pole yet. Should I tie it? I'll tie it for good measure. All right, I'm really excited about this tie constellation. It's hopefully going to take this plant a while to reach the top of this pole. So that is great too. I feel like it looks great in here. I love the cream variegation on the tie constellations. Sorry that you, you can't really see it because it faces up. Like the leaves are very like perpendicular to the stems. So unless I hold this plant pretty much sideways, it's hard for you to see the, the white variegated areas or even the surface of the leaves. But what I think I'm gonna do is try to train it to face this way. Um, I have the pole offset to one side. So the plant can be kind of in the middle of the pot. And right now the leaves are facing all around because I've been kind of rotating it so that it stays balanced. But now that I put it on a pole, I can try to just keep it facing one direction so all the leaves will face one way. So hopefully the next time you see this plant, these variegated leaves will be like facing forward. <laughs> okay, yes, I love this. Hooray, super exciting. I'm gonna put it down right back there behind me. Time for a new piece of paper. Do you see this? A sad thing happened. Um, and I don't actually know exactly what went wrong, <laughs> but I do have a hunch. So this is my Peperomia Calamella, which I bought from Lowe's or Home Depot um, a couple months ago. And I had a whole dramatic incident <laughs> with this plant where I discovered a big earwig bug in it in the middle of repotting it. And I think of it as my little earwig Peperomia. Um, but no, its name is Peperomia Calamella because it grows in these little columns. So I think I accidentally gave this plant a little bit of stem rot. So I noticed a couple days ago or maybe a little over a week ago now that this plant um, was suffering and needed to be propagated. And I think what happened was maybe I was pouring water a little bit too much on the stems of this plant and I think I rotted it right in the front of the pot. Like the plant that was closest to where I was always pouring the water is the one that died. You can see that it's rotting from the center right here. So I think water was just pooling right there. And unfortunately I killed off a part of this plant. And I think it could have been avoided by bottom watering or by watering this plant a little bit more carefully. Thankfully this plant is pretty easy to propagate. This part of the plant is fine. It looks healthy, it's perky, but this part is struggling. in the middle. So these peperomias have a really interesting adaptation. Each of these little nubbins is one of the leaves on this plant and, and the leaves each have this one surface 
on the top, which is flat and, and is different looking. It's a little bit transparent and that is called the fenestration. And it is called that because fenestration means window. So on Monstera Deliciosa and on Monstera Adinsonii, the Swiss cheese Monsteras, those ones have these holes in them and those holes are called fenestrations because those are also a type of window. But this type of fenestration is called a fenestration because of its transparency and how it lets light into the leaf. So the leaves are this juicy, succulent, little little leaf ball basically and this is an adaptation that peperomias have so this particular peperomia has this adaptation to have this type of succulence which is just a word that refers to a plant's ability to retain water so these juicy succulent leaves have a fenestration on one side which is like a window that allows light to enter the leaf and it allows the plant to process and photosynthesize more or less light depending on its needs so for example these pieces that are all shriveled up, the way that they shrivel, they actually kind of fold in that fenestrated window. They kind of collapse in on themselves. And so you can really clearly see the difference here on my, my two plants that I've got, where I've got these healthy leaves that the window is flat and open and facing outwards versus these little shriveled up bits, which actually look almost like a different plant because the plant basically closed up its little windows. Do you see how these leaves are flat? They're basically flat, but they didn't flatten in just any kind of random direction. They flattened in a way that closes up their little window. And if I, if I pry it open with my thumbs, I think you can maybe see how when it inflates, this is the front flat surface of the leaf. And you can see that the outside is a little bit different. It doesn't have that transparent look. It's actually got a little bit of a whiter coloration which is pr more protective from the sun because white colors bounce away more light and so you see that it's got this kind of powdery outside and then the translucent window on the inside so yeah i think that's a really cool adaptation that some succulent plants have with their little fenestration where when they start to wither they go into this natural self-defense mode where they say hey i don't really want as much light right now so hopefully we can propagate these and they will open their windows once more. <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I'm removing some of the lower leaves so that I can stick these stems back into the pot. And then I'm gonna take some of these little pieces and just stick them back in. Okay, hopefully that does it for that. And then I'm gonna just plant up one tiny one because I think that would be really cute to just do a separate little one. I love these little tiny mini pots. Okay, then I'm just gonna poke two holes. Stick these in there. Yay, so cute. I love tiny plants like this, even though they need to be potted up after not that long. So cute. Okay, and then I actually wanna do one more tiny pot because I've got this, where'd I put it? I've got this little snake plant propagation um, that is starting to like get gross in the water. <laughs> I've just had this sitting like in the corner of my kitchen for, I don't know, months now. I don't even remember what plant this is from. It looks like it's just like a Laurentii. Um, or actually this might have been a bird's nest Sansevieria, one of those like twisters or something like that. I can't remember. I don't remember what Sansevieria this is, but, or excuse me, Dracaena. It's a snake plant. After a little while, sometimes the snake plant propagations actually don't really like being in water. So I'm gonna just pop this into this tiny little pot. We'll just do that real quick. This is like the rhizome it was starting to grow, but it's kind of rotten now. So I'm gonna cut that off. You can see it's got like healthy roots up here. And then this part is kind of yucky, so I'm gonna just...
over to put in my little fertilizer balls. it's so cute okay love the little plants they are so adorable <laughs> okay let's move on to the next thing oh the tiny plants are so cute i love them so much oh the little peperomia amazing i hope this lives and the little snake plant they're adorable love it okay now i want to repot two philodendron hybrids that are actually among my most recent purchases but they seem like they've kind of outgrown their pots because they're, they're quite large. So I've got this one and this one. This is a philodendron summer glory. It is a philodendron gloriosum hybrid. It does have these bronze, dark, beautiful leaves that come in like a golden yellow color. And it's just amazing. And it's, it's falling over. Actually, I've got it in this, <laughs> I'm just holding it in this six inch pot, but it's in a tiny little four inch pot right here and it really, really needs to be potted up. It's falling over because it's so big. I don't know if you can see how much it's falling over. Um, but yeah, I wanna get this into a different pot. And then this one is my Philodendron Trouble Tonight, which is a hybrid that was created by Gabriella Plants. And this one is also just, just enormous. <laughs> it was much larger than I expected it to be when it arrived. And it's in a little four inch pot but the plant is huge and it's kind of spilling over the side. So I want to get this into its own pot as well. So let's do that. Woo. See what I mean? Oh, by the way, do you like this little, this little rug I have? It's technically a bath mat. I've had this for a while in my bathroom upstairs and I brought it down here and it looks so cute that it made me order a whole bunch more. It looks like it's just a little mossy, um, little Shire Hill. I don't know, it's so cute. I love it, it's such a vibe. Makes me feel like I'm in like a little pastoral, mossy world. <laughs> anyway, I love it. Oh, and my slippers too, aren't these so funny? The cat feet? Little like paws, their little feet. <gasps> they make me feel like such a little, <laughs> A little creature. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's keep going. This is the Philodendron Summer Glory, and I wanna put it into this gold pot here. I feel like the Summer Glory name and the whole vibe of this plant totally goes with the gold. When the new leaves come in, they're like this golden yellowish orange color. I'm gonna put it in this, um, this little six inch pot inside of here, so. It's gonna be a little bit of a size up for this plant, but I think it's ready for it. Woo. Oh yeah, these roots are beautiful. And red to match some of the accents on this plant.
right. Look at how awesome this is now. Ooh, it's kind of floppy in here still. This is beautiful. I'm really excited to have this now. It th I think it looks great in the gold. It's kind of moving around, but normally I'm not like holding up my plants, flopping them all around to show them to you. Well, I guess maybe I normally am doing that, but <laughs> I'm gonna set it down and it's gonna be able to stabilize and grow some little roots into its new soil ball and have a happy home in here. So hooray. Okay, I'm gonna put this one down. This is the newest leaf on it. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? This is such a beautiful plant. Philodendron summer glory. So this is a philodendron trouble tonight, which was hybridized by Gabriella plants. And these were grown from seed and they don't actually know what the mature form of this plant is going to look like, or if there's even going to be necessarily just one form. It's possible that the genetics of the parent plants were very strong in a certain way where like all of the different siblings grown from seed look very similar, or sometimes the genetics result in siblings with quite varied appearances, which also happens with human siblings, right? So um, you never really know how, how it's gonna turn out. It's got two plants in the pot, which is exciting because then I get to watch two different specimens grow and see how similar they are to each other. I'm gonna put this into this pot. It's a outer cash po. And then I've got this six inch pot to go inside. I got this really recently. I hope I'm not potting this up too soon. Woo! The roots look so good. <laughs> okay. I thought this was going to not be as fully rooted just because, um, I don't know. I don't know why I had that expectation. I just assumed that this wasn't going to have really big roots, but it does. It's got a big root system in here. So, I was worried that the pot that I chose is going to be way too big, but I think it's going to be okay because there is a honking root system. What is this? Oh yeah. Okay. So these plants, it says on the Gabriella plants website that these were grown um, in moss originally. lot more roots in there than I thought it would. And there is some sphagnum moss left in the center. I should probably try to get it out. Interesting. Okay, there's so much moss in the center that I'm worried that this might create some stem rot for these plants. So, let's pull some of it out. I'm really glad that I got this moss out of there because um, there was a much larger moss ball at the center of this than I thought there was going to be. Um, I guess Gabriella plants did say that they originally grew these in moss. So that is just a thing to be aware of. If you do have a moss ball at the center of your plant and then you want to pot it up into like a much larger pot, that is a situation that could lead to a bad environment for the roots in the pot because moss is incredibly water retentive and if you have a big ball of it that's like mostly all moss together it's going to hold on to a lot of water especially if it's right at the stems of the plant um, right at the base there that could stay really wet for a really long time and lead to some some rotting and some problems so i'm really glad that i got that out of there so good thing i decided to repot this okay so
that in there. That in here. Okay, hooray! I feel like this looks great in here. It's got a much bigger pot now, which I think it really needed to continue growing big and huge. I'm really excited to see how this grows. It already has such huge leaves. So yeah, hooray. Okay, I feel like it looks great in here. I feel so happy to be doing all this repotting. Okay, and then, okay, so now I wanna do this Metanilla. This is my Metanilla Miriantha, and it is a type of flowering plant. Well, actually, all of the plants in this video, I think, are flowering plants. Many of them make inflorescences instead of a true flower, except for the ficus. The ficus makes figs. But the Metanilla is one that is known for its flowers, and I purchased this plant in hopes that it would grow flowers for me indoors. I bought this sometime last year, a um, couple months ago, and I thought that I completely killed it. I missed a watering early on, and all of the leaves shriveled up, like shriveled to a crisp, um, and I thought the whole thing was a goner. But it somehow perked back up. I mean, it lost like most of its leaves. It looks kind of, looks a little bit gangly, but it did make a miraculous comeback and is still somehow alive, so, I want to repot it into a self-watering pot, which several people did actually suggest when I showed <laughs> the dire state that this plant was in last time I showed it to you guys. I got this pot from Amazon and I actually have it in another size, one size smaller, but I really like the design. It's got this very subtle face on it and I like the, the very subtle face, I don't know. <laughs> I like that it also comes with a pot that goes inside. This is approximately like five inches across or something, so I think it's gonna be a good size up for this Metanilla into self-watering. And this is one that, unlike the Thai Constellation, which I put into a self-watering setup, this one I hope to keep with water in it all the time because um, it's quite a thirsty plant. Currently, I've got this Metanilla inside, well, I had it inside of another ceramic pot, but also inside of this container um, to hold as much water as possible. So I think it'll be happier in a self-watering situation because then it won't be sitting in standing water all the time, but the soil will be moist. I was quietly protective of my heart to reassure that I could break to pieces and be left alone once more. If you hadn't been so patient, you'd be easy to ignore. You put up with all my till you didn't anymore. And now I stand here calling at your door. Oh, now I stand here calling at All right, at so your this door. substrate here is mostly like sand and perlite, and it's pretty different than the stuff that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna go get a little bit more perlite to amend my soil with to try to keep the two substrates a little bit more similar. I have been too self-involved Been protective of my feelings But somehow you made me fall You got underneath the surface And you shattered every wall And I know I got that feeling There's no question anymore Every time you see me mixing in perlite Know that I'm holding my breath <laughs> Don't breathe in the perlite, does It's not good for you The main thing with the wicks on the bottom of the self-watering pot is you just want to make sure that it sticks out out of the bottom long enough to reach the bottom of your reservoir. and be left alone once more you got underneath the surface and you shattered every wall and i know i got that feeling there's no question anymore and now i stand here calling at your door oh now i stand here calling at your door yeah i'm yours anywhere you want yeah i'm yours
it's perfect. Okay, I'm so excited that I got this in here. I already know that it's gonna be happier to have a little bit of a water reservoir all the time. So that is great, great news. Cut off this dead branch sticking out. I feel like this is looking so cute now. All the plants are looking so good. This is such a productive repotting day. Perfect. This was so much fun for me to make. I feel so accomplished. Um, I'm the kind of person who just puts off plant chores forever. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I'm a mega procrastinator. Um, and so knocking out a whole bunch of plants like this all at once for a repotting video and to hang out with you guys is just so awesome for me. I feel like it's just been a really great day. Felt like I'm making moves as a plant parent today. <laughs> Just doing all my little repottings and getting plants into actual cash pose that make them look beautiful as opposed to just having them in their plastic pots, which honestly, I don't know. I don't know if it's just me, but I don't really notice somehow. Like when a plant is in a nice pot, it looks really, really good. But when a plant is just in its plastic pot, it doesn't really like bother me like, oh, I need to pot that up. I'm just like, that's just a plant. But then when I finally do put them in pots, they look so great. So I need to do this more often. It's, um, it's expensive though. All of my like specialist plants that I worked on today, the Thai Constellation and my Philodendron hybrids, I repotted into a situation where I've got them in a plastic pot inside of an outer pot. I like that when a plant is in a plastic pot, when you pick it up, you can tell more easily how wet the soil is just because the plastic pots don't really have much weight. If the plant does start to struggle or if I can't remember the last time I watered it and I'm worried that I'm doing an overwatering potentially, all I have to do is pick up the nursery pot and I can just tell by weight whether or not the plant needs water. And a lot of times, when I have plants potted directly into a heavy ceramic pot, I can't really tell um, what the moisture level is. I have to actually stick my finger in there. So that is one of the reasons why I typically prefer the plastic pots, but that's just me personally. I don't know if that's something you like to do. I'd love to hear from you if that's also how you gauge your plants watering needs by just lifting them and checking them by weight. But anyway, yeah, this has been a super fun video. Thank you so, so much for joining me. I hope that your plants are bringing you joy and that you're having a fantastic planty week. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye.